Hi, in this video we'll be doing homework help for chapter 4. So let's go down, let's take a look at section 4.2, question number 3. And we'll do a similar question. Okay, so one of the biggest factors in determining the value of a house is the square footage. The accompanying data represents square footage and the selling price in thousands of dollars for a random sample of houses in a certain region. Okay. So the first question is, which variable is going to be our explanatory variable? Now remember, explanatory is the independent variable or the one that's going to be on the x-axis. So when I open my data set, oh, here's square footage. That's the x variable. That must be my explanatory. So square footage is the explanatory. Good. Now the scatter diagram. All right, well, let's use technology. So again, here's my data set. I'm going to click this, open in Excel, open. All right, enable editing. Remember, always enable editing first. And I want to create a scatter diagram. So the first thing is I want to select all of my data. So again, just dragging and selecting all of the numbers. And I want to insert. And again, we're talking about a scatter diagram or a scatter plot. So we're over here in charts. Again, yeah, typically recommended charts, that's your best bet. And oh, there we go, the very first one. So this is my scatter diagram. Again, always a good idea to always add your axes titles. Remember the explanatory was the square footage, which is along my x-axis or the bottom. And the price was my response or dependent variable along my y-axis. All right, so this is what the data looks like. So I go back and which one does this match? Well, it looks like it's kind of close to either A or C. So what we want to do also is make sure that we're looking at what the scale is on my axes. So for square footage, it goes from zero all the way up to 4,500. And on the y-axis, it goes from 0 up to 800. So when I look at these, it looks like A. Yep, there's A. Again, my horizontal axis goes up to 4,500 and up to 750. And clearly, C is, well, reversed. So A is definitely my choice. Good. Now find the linear correlation coefficient between the square footage and the asking price. All right, well, again, let's go back to technology. So we go to Excel. And what I want to do now is first click on one of the data points and then right click and go down to where it says add trend line. Now, if I add the trend line, there we go. And then over here where the options are, we can display the equation and display the R squared value. And so that's this box over here. Now, Microsoft Excel uses the convention of calculating R squared instead of R and some statistics and statisticians believe that's the better one to use. Our textbook uses the R value instead of R squared, but it's still the same idea. But since Microsoft Excel does give it as R squared, we're gonna to have to take the square root to find R. So we're gonna type in the value they gave us, so 0 0.8312, hit the square root button, and we get 0.9117. Okay, so let's go back to the homework and see how many decimal places. So round to three decimal places. All right, so if I round that to three decimal places, I chop it off here, I got a round up. So 0.912. All right, is there a linear relation between square footage and asking price? All right, now that R value is really close to one. I am almost positive that this is absolutely going to have a linear relationship, but it's a good idea to always double check the table too. So if I go back to the MyStat Lab, I'm gonna to go to the e-text and view the e-text for the course. Remember that table of correlation coefficients, it's located in the appendix and it's the appendix page two. So the easiest way to get there is at the top, A, hyphen two. You could also use the table that I provided in the notes because this is the same exact table. So here's A2. 
And the way we use this table, so again, go back to the original data. How many data points am I looking at? What's my sample size? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. My sample size is 12. So again, I wanna find the, the row, right? Start with n equals 12 and I go over. The correlation coefficient, the critical value would be 0.576. Clearly, our, uh, oops, hmm. uh, clearly our correlation coefficient 0.912 is bigger than 0.56, so absolutely there is that relationship. Now find the least squares regression line. All right, well, again, this is just typing in the line that Microsoft Excel gave us. So round to three decimal places. So the slope is 0.158. So 0.158x plus, and then 10.134. 10.134. Hmm, it's saying my y-intercept is incorrect. Uh, probably because of a rounding issue. All right, that's gonna happen. If that happens, you can of course just well, click Ask My Instructor and send it to me and I'll make that correction. Maybe it thinks it should be rounded down. Nope. Maybe it thinks it should be rounded up. Round to, oh, round, or you just read the question correctly. That's silly. Round the intercept to one decimal place instead of three. Well, that's why I got that one wrong. Hopefully you won't make the same mistake. Again, if you do, just click Ask My Instructor and I'll, I'll fix it for you. So interpret the slope. The slope is 0.158. So that means uh, it's positive. So we're increasing. And so it's how those two are related. So we're looking for the option that relates the square footage and the price as increasing. All right, so it looks like A is a pretty good choice. For every additional square footage, the selling price is increased by 0.158. $158,000. I think that makes sense. Uh, let's just look at the other ones. For a house that sold for $0, nope, that has nothing to do. A house that's zero square feet, that has nothing to do. Uh, and for, for every additional $1,000 in selling price, the square foot, nope, and that one doesn't make sense either because remember, the square footage is going to affect the price. The price of the house does not change the square footage. So this is the one that makes the most sense. There's my answer. Is it reasonable to interpret the y-intercept? Now remember, the y-intercept means if I plug in x equals zero. Well, x is my square footage. Would it make sense to have a square footage of zero for a house? And no, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So my answer is definitely no, so it's gotta be one of these. So no, a house of zero square feet is not possible, so it's outside the scope of the model. Perfect. Um, and again, b is the best answer there, because again, the, the other answer is no, it's outside the scope, that's true, but it's also not possible. And the house is not possible, that's true, but it's also outside the scope. B is definitely the best answer there. Okay, so one home that is 1,471 square feet is sold for 275,000. Is this home's price above or below the average for a home this size? All right, so this is where we need to use, uh, well, our, our predictor. We use our equation here to predict. So my line was the 0.158x plus 10.1. So we have a 1,471 square feet, square foot house. So with my calculator, clear. So 0.158, again that was my slope, times the square footage 1471 equals and then plus 10.1. So we get 242.5. So that's what the model predicts is 242.5. This one sold for 275, which means this home's price is above average. And the average price for a house that size would be, and again, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. So 243, 243. There we go. And that's it. That's how we do that question. 
Hopefully this helped. If you have any other questions with using Excel or other technology, please make sure you send those along and good luck with your homework.